So, UFC 242 happens. Khabib Nurmagomedov, what's new? Gets the win. Still remains undefeated. 28-0 right now. His 12th straight UFC uh, victory. It's amazing. Tied for Tony Ferguson uh, with the longest active winning streak in the UFC. And uh, he got it done by rear naked choke. It's like he's... Oh! You know, he set that up with his beautiful Sambo wrestling, his nonstop pressure. The, apparently, the joint at Abu Dhabi was 100 degrees. I, I thought Dustin uh, would have a shot. You know, he's that Louisiana kid. He's got that amazing story, the rise to the top. He beat Max Holloway back in April. Now he's fighting the Russian, the Dagestani, the Muslim champion, the undefeated guy. Didn't get it done, but, I mean, we knew that would happen. He did an interview with Brendan Schaub a couple of weeks ago leading up to this fight, Schaub was wearing a Mets jersey. I mean, I knew Khabib would win, but as the fight got closer, I was uh, a little unsure how well he would do. I thought Dustin might catch him a little more than he did. Dustin is being interviewed by Brendan Schaub with the Mets jersey. It's just, it's, you know, put your money, put your house, throw your kids, even, I mean, not all the kids, the ones that are good and do their homework. Throw the kids on black, Spin the table. And Pete drives one to center field. Back goes Robles for a look, but it's out of here. Number 44 for Pete Alonso. Alonso with a two-run homer to put the icing on the cake. Two-run homer to put the icing on the cake. Three two to Suzuki. Kurt Suzuki! See you later! My apologies to Mets fans, the reason why I became a mixed martial arts fan uh, was because of the Mets with in the 2010 roster, Bobby Parnell. Uh, exactly, exactly. So give me a break, all right? What was cool was the opposite of UFC 229 where Khabib jumped the cage looking to kill people and murder pregnant women, but that didn't happen. He jumped the cage this time and hugged Dana White, you know, was there for his family in Abu Dhabi, obviously all the sheiks were there. They took out their iPhone 12s, and uh, Khabib put an amazing performance. It was even better in the post-fight. Exchanged jerseys with uh, Dustin Poirier, which was kind of like a soccer, a football type of move, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool, pretty respectful. Oh, he's wearing Dustin yeah. Poirier's shirt. He is wearing Dustin <clears throat> Poirier's cool shirt. That? Fucking sportsman. Oh, man, that's beautiful. <clears throat> that, that makes me tear up. Now the next question, what's next for Khabib? He's undefeated. Uh, he's done all this media. He's beat Connor. He he beat the humble guy. Now he's got to fight Tony Ferguson. When? When is he going to do it? Oh, wait. Is he going to fight GSP? Wait. Before that, let's reflect on how good this guy is. ESPN just put out the pound-for-pound pound rankings. I agree with this. He's not better with John Jones. John Jones has not freaking lost. He's finished champs. He's submitted them. He's finished them. He does their best game. John Jones will jump into their best game. If, if it's a Muay Thai guy, he wants to kickbox. If it's a jiu-jitsu guy, he wants to wrestle or submit them. John Jones is nuts. We've seen that outside of the cage as well. But he's number one. Seriously, until he loses. Not from the USADA or the drug test. Until he actually loses from a human being. Ugh. John Jones is frustrating. He's an enigma. He's an oxymoron. John, don't get offended. Look that up before you, you attack me, brother. Khabib is number two. Uh, I think if he fights Tony Ferguson, beats Tony Ferguson, obviously, and fights GSP, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, beats GSP, I think he would deserve to be the number one pound-for-pound pound guy. No asterisks hanging over his career. Good guy. He's humble. He could finally move on past the Connor shenanigans, and I think that makes a ton of sense. Make Khabib number one. But he's got he's got a couple steps to go, all right? He's still, he's still hot in the pan, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I know he's beaten Dustin now, Connor, Rafael Dos, An uh, Dos Anjos. But before that, there's like eight or nine opponents that like a lot of build the record, kind of like a boxing type of record. So pump the brakes on everybody putting Khabib to number one. John Jones is still number one. So what's next for Khabib? A reporter in Abu Dhabi? As Dana. George St. Pierre to come back and fight with Khabib. Do you think this is possible to happen in the future? Sure. I'd love it. I think it'd be a super fight. You get George St. Pierre, 
uh, one of the best grapplers in mixed martial arts history, one of the smartest fighter in mixed martial arts history. You want to talk about dominance, about Khabib's dominance? GSP, he, he avoids people's strengths. He'll go for their weakness, exploit their weakness, uh, stay safe, keep his health. He's always been wise, cerebral type of fighter, and that translated into his uh, post-fight and then current fight, and now post-fighting career. He's always training. He, he dives into the pool when he's ready. He beat Bisbing at uh, UFC 217 at 185. Let's go. If he can make 155, that 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 to me is enough. The guy was going 170 champ forever. Goes up to 185. And now he wants to go the machinist, be 155. Give him the fight against George St. Pierre. Some people, though, really believe that Connor is a highly likely opponent for Mr. Khabib Nurmagomedov. I think the chances of Connor getting a rematch are kind of high. And wrong, Luke. Sorry, I love you. Brian Campbell does great stuff with CBS. He's a friend of mine. Luke, we've had our issues. But no, 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 highly likely. It's highly unlikely. The threshold is low. Probably not. Whatever court, jurisdiction, hyperbole, verbally type of words you want to say, Connor is done. Give him a break. I like Connor versus Dustin. I think that makes a ton of sense. Seriously, follow me quick. Or slow. I'll go slow. Connor fought Dustin years ago. This is when there were sponsors on the shorts, so that's how long ago you know it was. Connor had his hair uh, up. He wore a kilt. Uh, he drank blood from people's skulls. That's how long ago him and Dustin fought. Connor beat him under two minutes of his amazing performance, knocked him out. That was on his way to the title to fight Jose Aldo. Now Connor's a businessman. He's stepping on phones, he's punching people in the face. Dustin, on the other hand, the humble Louisiana kid, the amazing story, fought Khabib, lost. Fought Max, won. You know, he, he's still in the mix, but everybody knows his name now. A lot of people are finding out right now that Dustin and Connor fought. Run it back. Connor wants an immediate rematch against Khabib? Does everybody remember what happened? <laughs> Done. Come on, Connor, stop. Fight Dustin. Earn it. If you really care, if you're not just a whiskey salesman, bring it back.